वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू दिस आफ्टरनून सेशन ऑफ आवर मंथली मीटिंग आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू सी ऑल ऑफ यू हियर वेरी ब्यूटिफुल सोल्स शाइनिंग वेन आई स्टैंड हियर फोल्ड माई हैंड्स आई सेल्यूट दोज ब्यूटिफुल सोल्स शाइनिंग इन साइड ऑल ऑफ यू इट्स अमेजिंग हाउ ब्यूटिफुल द सोल इज it is the most important creative factor in this world it's the creator of the universe because we think we have all individual souls therefore how can we be creators the creator is one creator who created everything that's how we worship god but people do not realize that when we say one creator we are talking of one soul and we are all that one soul one glass of water not two i am holding only one glass of water with one trillion small drops in it are the drops different from the glass of water no they are they are the glass of water i'm only describing it differently how big are these drops of water tiny ones little bigger ones what changes their size can i make it 1 billion instead of 1 trillion instantly i change my awareness to billion can i make the very big drops I just say it's just a 100 drops i can do that too what is changing one glass of water into so many drops is merely our awareness nothing else our soul is participating in one soul but when we divide it by dividing awareness looks like we have become so many we can become trillions of souls even countless souls from one soul therefore i do not know how to describe that oneness which is the origin of all of us except i use a term totality of consciousness because we have to be conscious to be alive we have to be conscious to be able to be conscious of anything in the world we cannot have any awareness of the world if you are not conscious therefore i just use the word consciousness from that point of view not point of view that we are conscious when we are awake we are unconscious when we are sleeping we are unconscious when we are under anesthesia not like that saying the source of our awareness source of our life is one totality and we are all participating in the same when i was very young somebody told me the spiritual path is that we are drops of the ocean separated from the ocean for many millions of years and we have been struggling to find our true home and we have to now make a long journey a spiritual journey with meditation fasting prayers going to the place of worship follow the religious precept that i have been taught do all that pray to god one day please show me your grace and t- tell me where is that heaven where is that true home to which i belong and after that struggle a long journey one day i'll go and merge in that ocean this was description of the spiritual path i wondered what is the advantage of the spiritual path i am a nice little drop now the sun shines i make a rainbow color on it on myself i can shine as a drop i have an identity as a drop what are they telling me struggle hard to lose what i have and go merge in an ocean which doesn't care one more drop is added or not totally lose lose game this was the spiritual path explained to me and i said i cannot follow that sorry this is not a path for me to go and lose what i have and merge in a big ocean 
and the ocean. Who cares? One more drop is added into the ocean. I was wrong. They were wrong. That is not the truth at all. We are drops of the ocean in the ocean right now. We never left the ocean. What we left was the awareness of the ocean. We forgot where we are. Just because we were a little part of the ocean, not leaving the ocean, we just did not know where we belong. Spiritual path is no journey at all. Spiritual path is the awakening of your awareness to totality. Every time we move closer to our inside, we find we are bigger than we thought we were. The world looks so big, we suddenly find the world is a small drop in us, inside us. The whole world we see outside created, we discover, after going in, we discover it's all coming from inside, just projected on a big screen. Just to sp spread the image on a large screen does not make it a bigger thing. We see the movies, big screen movie, the projector is still small, the film is still the same size. And there, from there we are seeing a big shadow. That's what the creation is. It's all taking place from within, from one totality. And the, what is the spiritual journey then? Spiritual journey is not going anywhere at all. In fact, if you ask me, spiritual journey is stop going anywhere. If you halt, you'll get your true home. But we never stop. Our mind keeps on running all the time. Our mind is constantly outside of ourselves. And therefore, we don't know where we belong. So once we are able to put our attention on our own true self inside, layer after layer, because we are covered with these layers. So when we pierce these layers and go inside, we discover our own totality. Supposing you have one glimpse of that. Just while you are sitting in a human body, you get one glimpse of it. And then you look at the world. How will you feel? This all yourself. It's all an extension of yourself. If it is all an extension of yourself, can you ever hate anybody? Can you ever talk ill of anybody? Who are you talking ill of? You're talking ill of yourself? Okay, supposing we don't call it ourself. We say that's God, the creator. If that's the creator, you're talking against somebody, you're talking against your creator whom you worship. You go to church and you go to temple and you go to mosque and worship. And when you see the same creator in a human being, you don't like it. You, you can start hating. How is it possible? One glimpse into our own totality makes you love everybody without exception. And because we are separated, because that one is separated, the kind of compassion that you get for everyone is amazing. We don't see it amongst people here because we are lost in our own self. We are lost where we belong, not lost somewhere else. And when perfect living masters come, they are an example for us that here is a human being, ordinary human being, born like us, dies like us, lives like us. His awareness is total. And therefore, when he looks at us, he looks with love and compassion, which is unmatched. We are all in the same state. There is no difference between a perfect living master and any one of us so far as the structure of our consciousness is concerned. No difference at all. We are all the same. Only difference is how much awareness you have, how much knowing you have of your own self. Not knowledge of the world. That knowledge can be easily acquired and learned by the mind. How much awareness knowing you have of your own self that is behind all these curtains. When you know that, love comes automatically. That is why we go to these perfect living masters and we feel a strange feeling that they are always compassionate. They never judge us. Sometimes we feel, my karma is so bad, I'm a bad guy. And if I appear before a man who knows everything, how will he feel? He might judge me that I am not a good person. What's the master's point of view? You are a good person. You are the best possible soul that can be created. 
यू आर अ सोल योर माइंड हैज एक्यूमुलेटेड सम थॉट्स विच डोंट लुक गुड एंड वॉट मेड इट लुक गुड और नॉट लुक गुड योर ओन माइंड ये फंक्शन ऑफ द माइंड गुड एंड बैड इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ द माइंड नॉट ऑफ द सोल एट ऑल सोल इज प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस प्योर एबिलिटी टू बी अवेयर प्योर एबिलिटी टू लिव एंड दैट्स वॉट्स मेकिंग ऑल लाइफ पॉसिबल वेन वी लुक एट लाइफ हियर ह्यूमन बींग्स आर मेयरली वन स्मॉल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइफ वेरी स्मॉल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइफ द इंडियन स्क्रिप्चर दे टॉक ऑफ एट पॉइंट फोर मिलियन चौरासी लाख एट पॉइंट फोर मिलियन फॉर्म्स ऑफ लाइफ एग्जिस्टिंग ऑन दिस प्लानट अलोन and out of that more than 50% almost 50 5.6 million are in the vegetable kingdom trees plants and all those and only in the last list they have written up 400000 human being is one out of 400000 the last list the millions have gone and in that 400000 the list includes those that are in this planet in this universe physical universe but not present in their physical bodies guardian angels disembodied spirits ghosts of all kinds of spirits they are all included as forms of life even those whom we think are creators of these universes who are not the ultimate creative power but they are creators at different levels they are also included so all forms of life has been included and yet out of so many forms of life only one form provides the gateway to go and find yourself within only one human form amazing why should that be why should human beings have such a big privilege that they can open the gate and by simple practice of going within fight out their true true nature true identity true home and even these so called higher angels can't do it what what's the obstruction that they have that we don't have well we have a unique experience which in no other form of life has a unique experience gifted to us and it is called by a misnomer called free will free will means we can decide what to do nobody else can decide what to do nobody they are all programmed how they will live plants grow they no choice birds fly no choice they go they fly thousands of miles no choice angels know what they have to do beforehand no choice they never decide where to go not to go their program is completely written up and they follow it nobody questions should i do it or not do it except human beings this amazing ability of a human being to say should i do it or not should i believe him or not should i act on it or not this this extreme experience of a choice making and not only choice making being faced with alternatives to make a choice that means being given choices to make do you want to pick up this or this so sometimes when we feel maybe free will is not real maybe we are also programmed like everybody else and we are just thinking we have free will we didn't make our life when we look back at life so many things happened which are not our choice at all and yet we thought that we were making choices somebody can question like that like one guy in the university where i was going he discovered that actually if we believe in god we cannot have free choice because the definition of god in all religions without exception is god is omnipotent all powerful omnipresent present everywhere and omniscient knows everything 
when I have to make a choice, should I go right or left? Does God know it or no? If God does not know where I will go, he is not omniscient. The definition fails. And if he knows where I am going, I have no real choice. I will do what he knows already. Therefore, free will is merely illusion. It's not real. Based on this, this friend of mine came to the conclusion that because he believes in an omniscient God, all-knowing God, we cannot have free will. So he called me in the morning. He sure I found out we have no free will really. It's all an illusion. Everything is happening by itself. So I invited him to my apartment. I said, come, let's test it out, what you are saying. It's great what you found. So when he came, I played a little trick and I arranged. It's a story many of you heard before, so please don't listen again <laughs> for the newcomers. I arranged a tray with a cup of coffee, a cup of tea and an empty cup. So when he came, I said, would you like to have some tea, coffee or nothing? I have all three on this tray. And since you have no free will, don't use free will. He was stumped. He said, you destroyed my whole discovery just by putting three cups in a tray. I said, I am proving to you, not only do you have free will, you have no choice but to use the free will. You said, I have no free will and I am proving to you, now avoid it. Tell me how you will avoid free will. You say, no, that's your free will. Coffee, your free will. Tea, your free will. Aren't you seeing your free will in play right here? Free will is a real experience. Nobody can deny it. Every day we use it. In fact, we cannot avoid it. If when somebody says, I have no free will, he's saying it out of his free will. He could have also said, I have free will. Therefore, this choice making is going on continuously. Free will is a real experience only available to human beings. That's amazing. That only life form that should have this experience of making choices should be human being. Then what is the advantage of giving us this special choice? Advantage is that we can seek our true home only if we have free will. We cannot be a seeker if we have no free will. Seeking is a choice. Seeking to go to our true home is a choice which we make. This wonderful gift to us, wonderful gift of the experience of free will is making us capable of going within and going out to home. Therefore, a human life is the most important life of all life forms. It's so important. Somebody asked me, then I had first discovered what these different levels of experiences are. Somebody said, human beings are in the worst state here in physical form. Wouldn't it be better to be in the astral form or in the causal form? And much to the surprise of my friend, I said, I would rather be in the physical form than astral form or causal form. How can that be? Those are higher levels of consciousness. I said, higher level does not mean you have the ability to do what you can do here. You can find a perfect living master here. You cannot find in the astral plane, nor in the causal plane, nor in the spiritual level. Can you imagine how unique the situation is that in the whole of creation, at all levels of consciousness, there's one level created at the sixth level below our totality in the physical plane as physical human bodies, wearing physical human bodies, with physical minds working through physical bodies, that we have a choice making, a free will experience, which helps us to become seekers, and by seeking, find a perfect way master and go home. Of course, the question still remains, is free will real? Are we saying it is real? Then we are denying God. We are denying God's, we are denying God's own awareness and His own knowledge. 
If we can decide something, God doesn't know. He's not God anymore. The truth is, when we exercise our free will and we make a choice, that is God's choice. We cannot go outside of it. It doesn't look like this. We don't know God. Nobody has ever seen God. Nobody has ever met God. I can tell you for with certainty. Unless you call some creative power of the lower regions and call them God. Yes, there are many gods. They are like us. They are human beings who did very good karma and their actions were so wonderful, they got rewarded and they were placed in creative positions at certain levels. <coughs> but I am talking of the ultimate one. The ultimate one knows everything because we are part of that ultimate one. Whatever we decide is the same awareness of the top. Therefore, free will is real at the top. Looks like illusion here because we separate ourselves from the top. When you will discover the true reality that the top and this are the same, our soul is part of the total at all times. Somebody asked me in a church one time, if we were so happy in our true home, why did we leave it and come here? And I said, you want the true answer or a made-up answer? Give me true answer. The true answer is we never left our home. <laughs> we are still there. We didn't leave our home. We became unaware of our home. We got lost where we were. Look, look at a person who is looking for something that is already with him. I saw an old man. He was having those glasses. And instead of on the eyes, he put them up. Sometimes, you know, people do that. And he's running all over the house looking for these glasses. He's carrying the glasses with him. We are carrying our true home with us wherever we are running. We are running to places of worship going to the mountains, going into the forest to look for something we are carrying with us all the time. That master used to give example of the musk deer. The musk deer has a musk fragrance coming from within its own head. It runs all over the forest looking for where is this coming from. And gets tired and falls down. We are doing the same thing. We are looking for truth at the wrong place. We are looking at truth outside of ourselves. It is all lying inside of ourselves. So that is why the spiritual journey is an awakening into higher awareness. It is not going anywhere. We don't have to go anywhere. The free will that we have matches the free will of the ultimate creator. There is no conflict at all. We could not make a decision if our totality was not making the same decision. Then another issue comes up. Before we decided, did God know before we decided? Or when we were deciding, God came to know what we are deciding? You know, this is such a nice question the mind puts. Because mind takes time to be real. Mind thinks there was a before and after. We can't get it out of the system. The mind cannot think outside of before and after, past, present, future and time. Where we belong, there is no time. There is no before and after. It's constantly now. There is no other time. That is timeless. Where we are timeless, how can you say, did he know before or after? So the whole game of time past, present, future, in our true home is going on simultaneously. It's not something that will happen before or later. Before and later came after the causal plane, after we got a mind, and then we began to have history, past lives. All past lives exist together. All past, present, future exist simultaneously together. It's all in zero time spread out into past, present and future. It's amazing how time is created. Only by going within, you can find the true nature of time and space. People are just observing outside, trying to make guesswork. How can you shrink time? How can you shrink this? Go in and see how it's expanded first. 
see how we expand time and make it into past, present and future. And I always remind people that we are constantly living in the now. We cannot live in the past. It's gone. Nor can we live in the future. It is still to come. Then where are we living? Now. Somebody gave me a book saying, live in the now. I said, where are we living otherwise? I haven't met any human being living anywhere else except in the now. Now and here have been constant with us. If we are living in now, how much time is there in now? Zero time. How can that be? When we're experiencing, I'm talking to you in the now, then how can it be? The moment I utter a word, it's past. Before I uttered it, it was future. Now has no time at all. And yet we're living in the now. How did this happen? How can it happen that we say we are living in time, we have so many years of life, we have this so many, an hour of conversations here, we are always saying we are doing things in time, and the only time when we are doing things is now, which has no time at all, not in a billionth part of a nanosecond. How is it possible? The possibility comes because of a unique thing we have in our head called memory. It's memory that creates the sense of time. We remember we just did this. We remember we just came in here. We remember we had a snack. We remember we had the salad. We remember how it was. Supposing your memory goes completely. Everything goes. You can't know anything. People with Alzheimer's living in a very strange state of being completely unaware that there's a world existing, but they're living in the now. And for them now is a very short, very short spell of the past. So what we call now is actually a created recent past, created by your mind, a recent past. And the recent past that just happened now few seconds earlier, few minutes earlier, we are calling it now. So now, what we call present, present is past, always. What about future? Maybe future, maybe something real hiding somewhere and appears, creating our life. Not at all. We make our future by a simple thing called hoping, hope, fear, anticipation. These are the same thing. When you have a positive anticipation, we call it hope. When you have negative anticipation, you call it fear. When you hope for something, you are creating a future. When you are afraid of something, you are creating a future. And the past memory that has come up and creating your past and present, that projects into the future with your hopes and fears and those futures keep moving and becoming the past. But to hope and to fear takes time. Therefore, both of them are in the past. So future is also past. Examine carefully. Past, present and future is all past. And there is no way a human being can experience the past except through memory. It can be very sharp memory. We are a very sharp memory. That is why the sharp memory is recalling and we are reliving a sharp memory of something already there. But you cannot create a memory if nothing has happened. Or can we? Can we create a memory without anything happening at all? Well, when they make a movie, we go and see the movie in the stage. It was shot somewhere. It was filmed and developed. Now, we have a factory I mentioned in the morning at the causal mental plane where we manufacture life patterns and life is printed and stamped. One life with trillions in unlimited past lives, unlimited future lives and instilled in the mind as a memory. We come down to the astral and causal physical planes and play it out. We are playing DVDs. Now, when we play a DVD, supposing a DVD has a one and a half hour of program on it. Holding the DVD in your hand 
you are holding one and a half hour of time. It doesn't look like that. But the, when you play, it's one and a half hour. If you don't play, the whole one and a half hour is in your hand. That's how destinies are made. Our destinies are made or like DVDs and we are playing them out in time. Can you imagine that all I am sharing with you is experienceable? That you can actually check out the truth of what I am saying. I am not saying just accept what I am saying. I don't want you to accept what I am saying. I want you to experience it. And the experience is possible by simple step, go within yourself. Put your attention on the self inside. And from the inside, put your attention on the further inside. That's all two steps. Third one will be automatic if you seek your true home and a perfect living master takes you to the third step. These are very simple things for a person who has seen what's going on, how the creation has come into being and how you can verify all these things. Human beings are the luckiest of forms of life to have the ability not only to seek and find, but to know the details of the whole creation, the creator, the creation, all laws of the creation are all available if we go within. All questions we can ever ask are all answered inside. Even questions which we cannot find answers to here, they become irrelevant when we find they are related to something that's not connected with reality. That also you can find out by going within. That is why I'm so happy that you came here and I could share with you these teachings of great master Hajur Maharaj Baba Savan Singh, who was able to take me through a process that is called initiation. And the initiation is merely a way of saying, I've come, I've accepted, I came for you, I'll take you back home. That's the meaning of initiation. People misunderstand. People think initiation is how to teach us how to meditate. And the books can teach you how to meditate. Thousands of books on that. Anybody else who has learned a little way of doing meditation, meditation often is considered sit in a certain position, stillness, close your eyes and think what you can and all the thoughts are of the world, no matter how hard you try. People have tried all the time and they can't get over the thoughts. They, they say our mind is terrible. Mind is not terrible. Mind is doing its job. It is meant for that. It is meant for thinking, meant for experiencing what is created outside. It is an instrument given to us to experience. How are you blaming your mind and instrument like computer? The computer, new artificial intelligence computers are coming up and they will give us good advice. We will blame them for everything. We have designed them, we made them. The mind is made by us for our use. Use it. Don't get used by it. Mind is not a good instrument to decide what to do. Mind is a very good instrument to do what you decide to do. You should decide what to do and make the mind do it. Then who is that you who should decide what to do and tell the mind to do it? Your intuitive self. Don't forget your intuitive gut feeling that comes. Sudden feeling, sudden knowledge. If you begin to listen to the sudden knowledge that comes and not destroy it by thinking too much about it, it will come all the time, every day. You will have your guidance from your own self, not from the mind. Use the mind to implement what you decide. That means use your spirit, your soul to make decisions. Develop spiritual will. There are two kinds of willpower. Spiritual willpower and mental willpower. We are constantly using mental willpower, encouraging the mind, making it stronger, and ultimately making ourselves a prisoner, a slave of the very instrument given to us to serve us. That's what's happened. We've been strengthening the mind all the time. Study hard, make the mind very active, think, think. I remember in the 60s when I came to this country first time, on the wall they used to write, think. I said, this country is going somewhere very wrong side. <laughs> oh, they are encouraging how to think. If they are saying, use thinking, I would be very happy. 
use thinking to carry out what you have decided it be very happy they just uh, giving food to the mind think more think more no mind has got to use to thinking and you can't stop thinking and mind is continuously thinking of things other than your own self it doesn't want to think of yourself thinks of the world creation and relationships even thinks of food that is the food good or not i am hungry what a just for survival things are merely for survival here we are spending time on that instead of saying i have got a human body the human mind with the possibility of seeking searching and seeking both are available to me searching with the mind seeking with the soul i should use it use the mind and you are the master of the mind spiritual well spiritual spiritual will spiritual will should be developed more than the mental will we are developing mental will all the time some people say give us a shortcut how to develop spiritual will i gave a very simple shortcut i'll share with you simplest shortcut is when the mind wants something very badly say no not every day not everything two three times a week that's not too much two three times a week you tell the mind no mind says no one time just one exception say no if you can stand on that no when the mind wants something very badly what are you developing the power to say no to the mind is spiritual will you're developing it therefore if you practice that you'll find ultimately mind will follow what you say it it gives up the mind gives up its own will when it find that you are not listening to its will but giving directions to the mind what to do so that is why use the mind tell the mind what to do and you decide intuitively what comes to you by gut feeling what you have to do your life will turn around in no time thank you very much once again for coming for this monthly meeting and we'll be here for two days for the holiday party and i'll see you tomorrow at the holiday party that starts at 1 uh, 1 o'clock here only Okay, one o'clock here only. We'll see you again. Thank you very much, beautiful souls. Thank you.